The Peter Schiff Show. Well, we had widespread selling in the markets today. It was real carnage across the board. Everything went down except the U.S. dollar. The Dow Jones was down almost 400 points, 394. Uh, but percentage-wise, uh, that was only about 2%. That wasn't bad compared to what happened uh, in other indexes and other sectors. In fact, when it comes to the Dow Jones averages, the utilities were the weakest. They were down almost 4%, 3.7%. The Nasdaq was down two and a half percent. The composite down 133 points. But various sectors were hit very hard, uh, particularly the interest rate sensitive sectors. I mentioned the utilities, but the home builders got crushed. Emerging markets got obliterated. Gold stocks were down big. In fact, I think gold stocks were down about five percent, five and a half percent on the day, almost six percent. And that's on basically a six six tenths of a percent decline in the price of gold. I mean, gold was only down about ten bucks, uh, but gold stocks were down much more. Now, silver dropped about fifty cents. Remember, all the way back down to nineteen, it was over twenty bucks a couple of days ago when I recorded the last podcast. And you know, you might think, what's going on? I mean, it's just been two days when I did the last podcast. Gold was soaring. The dollar was tanking. Uh, the markets were going up. Why? Why were the markets so excited a couple of days ago? Well, we got horrible economic data. I mean, the economic data that we got uh, so far for August basically confirms that we have the weakest economy maybe in six years. And if you remember, what caused the markets to be concerned was the Janet Yellen Jackson Hole statement that the case for a rate hike had strengthened, and that was based on the economic data that came out in maybe June and July. Well, based on the data that's come out since she made that speech, this is data about August, that case has now weakened considerably because the August data shows that the data that we got in June or July that might have been positive was a fluke, an outlier, a one-off event. Because now we're right back in the, the weakening mode. And so if the Fed really were data dependent, which is what Janet Yellen said, well, now the data is awful. So why would they hike rates? And that's exactly what happened. The market started to take those rate hikes off the table. Now, I thought I never thought they were on the table to begin with, but there were people that, that bought into it. But when they saw this horrible data and they knew the Fed was data dependent, the markets reacted. Well, now in the last couple of days, particularly today, people are now questioning whether or not the Fed is actually data dependent. And they're thinking that they're going to raise interest rates, even if the data is bad. Now, what would make them jump to such a conclusion? Well, we had several Fed officials, both yesterday and today, who basically continued to talk about the possibility of rate hikes. And nobody has acknowledged the weakening economic data that has come out. Now, I've said many times, they don't want to acknowledge that data. That, that plays into Donald Trump's campaign. They'd be peddling fiction. They don't want to talk about a weakening economy, so they have to ignore the data. But the fact that they are ignoring the data while they're saying they're data dependent and they still talk about the possibility of rate hikes, that's got everybody scared. But, you know, what a possibility of a hike. I mean, all these guys say is they don't rule out the possibility. Well, a possibility is not a probability, and it's certainly not a certainty. But the markets are acting as if the Fed is about to raise rates, and that's why everybody is so scared. Now, it's not just the Fed, because yesterday, uh, Draghi, in a press conference, he was asked about, you know, what are you going to do when this QE program ends? and is scheduled to end uh, sometime, maybe I think the first quarter next year. And he basically said, well, we don't have any plans to do more QE. And we had some similar statements coming out of the Bank of Japan to the extent that, you know, they're not going to do anything more. And this is scaring the markets because the markets have been riding a sea of liquidity. 
from all over the world. And if the Bank of Japan is not going to be providing more liquidity, if the ECB is not going to be doing it, and now if the Fed is going to take away its punch bowl, this is what's scary markets all around the world. Because it's not just, again, U.S. markets are not the only ones that sold off. Markets are selling off around the world. And it's not just the stock markets. It's the bond markets, European bonds, Japanese bonds. Look at U.S. bonds. Yields now are the highest they've been in three months. I mean, we've had a two-day spike in the uh, yield on the 10-year to the 30-year. And this is really going to crush the housing market. That's why the home builders uh, got obliterated today. I think the biggest loser was Hovanian, which had some bad news, but they were about about 13%. But all these home builders got clobbered because if interest rates go up, houses are going to get that much less unaffordable than they already are. Uh, but the, the question is why all of a sudden, in just a couple of days, are, are people so convinced that the Fed's going to raise rates? Now, what happened today, there was a, a Fed guy that spoke this morning, Eric Rosengreen, right? He's the Federal Reserve Boston, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. And in his talk, he said, I'm quoting, that a reasonable case can be made for, tighten, for tightening interest rates uh, to avoid overheating the economy. So a reasonable case can be made for a gradual rate hike to avoid overheating the economy. That's what he said. Well, sure, you can make a reasonable case for raising rates gradually. I can make an even more reasonable case why we should raise them rapidly. But just because you can make a reasonable case to do something doesn't mean that they're going to do anything. And he said that we, we need to raise rates to avoid the economy overheating. I mean, what economy is he talking about? The U.S. economy? Does anybody think the U.S. economy is in danger of overheating? I mean, it's barely growing at 1%. I mean, first of all, I don't even believe the Keynesian nonsense that an economy can overheat. Like an economy is like a car. And if it goes too fast, you know, the engine is going to blow up or something. The economy can't overheat. But what Keynesians think is that if economies grow too fast, they will create too much inflation. And that's what's overheating, right? The but inflation is not caused by economic growth, and a growing economy doesn't overheat. But if you actually believed all that Keynesian nonsense, you wouldn't look at the U.S. economy and think that it's anywhere close to overheating. So if he's saying, well, we need to raise rates simply to stop the economy from overheating, well, he's saying that rate hikes are nowhere near uh, the horizon because the economy isn't even close to overheating. I mean, we're, we're almost ready to stall. Forget about overheating. But that was what got it going. But then we had, I watched an interview, another Fed uh, guy, uh, Dan Tarillo, I think the guy's name was, president of one of these other banks. I forget which one. He was interviewed by Steve Leesman on CNBC. And if you actually listen to what this guy said, probably the furthest thing from his mind is a rate hike. I mean, I mean everything he's saying was really dovish as far as I was concerned. But then kind of at the end of the interview, Steve Leesman says, well, do you think the Fed's going to raise rates this year? Do you, do you think we'll have a rate hike this year? And basically, the only thing he said in answer to the question was something like, well, I, I wouldn't want to say that it's impossible that uh, rates would go up. I mean, why would you answer a question like that? I mean, do you think rates are going to go up? Yes or no? His answer is, well, I wouldn't say it's impossible. Well, of course, it's, nothing's impossible. I mean, that doesn't even answer the question. Although to me, the fact that he answers it that way means he doesn't think rates are going to go up. Look, if somebody asked me, hey, Peter, do you think, uh, you know, aliens are going to invade the earth in September? Right? I mean, obviously, I would say, no, I don't think they're going to invade the earth. I wouldn't come back and say, well, you know, I wouldn't want to rule out a possibility. I mean, I wouldn't want to say it's impossible that aliens could invade the earth because, of course, it's not impossible. I mean, it is possible. It is possible that there are aliens and it is possible that they'll choose September to launch their invasion. Right. All that is possible, but it is extremely improbable. So why even bring it up? So why answer that question? by saying, well, you know, I, I wouldn't want to say it's impossible that the Fed might raise rates. See, all of this is part of their spin. It's part of their charade, right? Keep it, keep it out there. Keep the rate hike out there as if, you know, let's keep the possibility out there. But you know what? All this is blowing up in the Fed's face because I don't think they wanted the markets to tank based on the mere possibility of a rate hike. But, of course, they can't admit that raising rates is impossible. But every time they speak, 
they talk about the fact that one is possible, and that has spooked the markets, and now the markets are falling. And to me, we could be setting ourselves up for maybe some type of a Black Monday event. I mean, not, you know, a la 1987 Black Monday, but another big decline. You know, the Dow was down almost 400 points today. Maybe it drops another four or 500 points. Maybe it could drop 1,000. I mean, I think there's a pretty good chance that if the markets really believe that the Fed is going to hike rates this month, that we can have a 10% drop in the U.S. stock market between now and the day they're supposed to raise rates. Now, if the markets drop by 10% and it looks like they're going to keep falling, what's the Fed going to do? Is the Fed going to raise rates? No, they're not. Every other time. See, when the market starts, when the Fed starts to prepare the market for a rate hike, then the markets tank. And now the Fed can hike rates. I guarantee you, if the market really tanks and we're down 10%, what is the Fed going to start talking about? QE4. They're going to start talking about how monetary conditions have now tightened, right? Every time the market goes down, oh, monetary conditions have tightened, right? Oh, the case for, for uh, raising rates has now weakened. That's what they're going to say. So it's the same old thing all over again. And when are people going to figure out that the Fed can't raise rates? Now, I was watching on CNBC, and these guys are now starting to get you know, they're questioning. I was watching Art Cashin, and he said, wait a minute, the Fed is data dependent. They tell us they're data dependent. The data is awful, yet they're still talking about raising rates. So what's going on? And now they're saying, well, maybe they're going to raise rates even if the data is bad. Well, why would, why would you believe that? Because they're saying they're only going to raise rates if the data is good. So why are you jumping to these conclusions? But that's what's so scary for the markets. Because remember, the, the nonsense that people were swallowing was that, well, rate hikes will be OK because the Fed is only going to rate, raise rates if the economy is strong. And a strong economy is great. It's good for stocks. It's good for corporate earnings. But if now the Fed is going to raise rates, even though the economy is weak and then it's not good for co corporate earnings, then it's a disaster for the stock market and it's going to collapse. And, you know, one of the other myths out there is that higher rates are going to be good for the financials. You know, because the financials, yeah, you know, outperformed today. They weren't down as much as uh, other sectors, you know, some of the banks. And the reason is they think, oh, this is good. Rising interest rates is going to mean better margins for banks, right? Because the, the yield the yield curve is going to steepen. And, you know, banks borrow sh short and lend long. And if they get a steeper yield curve, that's going to be good for bank profits. This is all nonsense. The banks are going to get crushed with higher interest rates because they're not going to make more money on their loans. They're going to, they're going to end up issuing fewer loans. The problem is they're going to take a bath on the loans they've already written because those low yielding loans are going to lose a lot of value when interest rates go up. And a lot of those loans are going to go into default and the collateral is going to collapse. So banks are going to get screwed regardless. If the, if the Fed keeps interest rates low, the, the banks are in trouble. If the Fed raises interest rates, the banks are in trouble. It's a no-win situation for the financials. That's why I don't own them. But that is the huge financial crisis that, that's coming, which is the reason the Fed isn't going to raise interest rates. You know, instead of doubting the, the data dependency, right? Because now people are saying, well, maybe the Fed isn't going to be data dependent. Maybe they're bluffing about that. Well, the real bluff is that they're going to raise rates. That's the bluff because they can't acknowledge the weakening data. People are saying, why is the Fed not acknowledging the economic weakness? They don't want to. They want to pretend the economy is strong. So that's why they have to pretend they're getting ready to raise rates. But they can't admit that they're not going to raise rates because then they have to admit the economy is not strong. But if the markets believe the Fed's going to raise rates because they don't want to admit that they're not, then the stock market tanks, the bond market tanks, and now the Fed has to come back and take the rate cuts off the ta rate hikes off the table. But now they're in an even worse position because now it looks like they're beholden to the markets, which of course they are, because remember, the entire goal of their monetary policy was to inflate asset bubbles because they believe in the trickle-down wealth effect. Well, if the whole goal of their policy was to prop up the markets, and then they say, okay, now we're going to raise rates and the markets collapse and everything they did is undone. Well, what are they supposed to do? Are they going to stand back and just allow it to happen? No, they're going to reverse the process. They're going to do more QE. They're going to cut rates. They've even said as much, right? They only want to raise rates so they can cut them. Well, the sooner they raise them, the sooner they're going to have to cut them because the act of raising them uh, 
pushes the economy into recession that much sooner. But of course, that doesn't mean they shouldn't raise rates. They should. They should raise them a lot, even though it's going to push the economy into recession because the economy needs a recession because the recession is the restructuring. The last thing we need is for this bubble to get bigger. But that's exactly what the politicians want. They want the bubble to get bigger because the alternative scares the hell out of them. They don't care that it's not real prosperity or a real recovery. They, they care more about four. They don't give a damn about substance. But, you know, the voters, of course, they care. That's why, uh, you know, you're going to see or you've seen the popularity of Bernie Sanders or you're seeing the popularity of Donald Trump. And that's why Donald Trump might surprise people. And apparently, too, in the polls now, Donald Trump is now even or maybe slightly ahead of of Hillary Clinton. But, you know, I don't even necessarily trust these polls because I, I bet there's a lot of people that are going to vote for Trump who are not telling the pollsters they're going to vote for Trump because, you know, it's not politically correct to say you're you're you know, you're going to vote for Trump because what, what are you a racist? Right. What, so people don't want to necessarily admit that they're going to vote for Trump. But when they get into the voting booth, they're going to vote for Trump. In fact, I think there's a lot of people that are going to vote for Trump just to throw a monkey wrench into the system, just to see what happens. You know, because so many people are saying, oh, it's going to be a disaster if Trump becomes president. I bet there's a lot of people that want to see that. It's almost like, you know, it's going to be really entertaining. They want to see the show. They know that if Hillary is president, it's going to be boring. It's just going to be the same old, same old. At least if Donald Trump is there, you know, it could be entertaining to see what happens. I mean, there's some people like, you know, you go to a movie and you root sometimes, you know, you root for the bad guys in real life. You wouldn't. Right. But, you know, it's interesting to, to, to let them get away with something. And people just want to be entertained. People are just curious to see what would happen. Is it really going to be so bad? Well, let's see. Let's shake things up. I don't know. Well, we had widespread selling in the markets today. It was real carnage across the board. Everything went down except the U.S. dollar. The Dow Jones was down almost 400 points, 394. Uh, but percentage-wise, uh, that was only about 2%. That wasn't bad compared to what happened uh, in other indexes and other sectors. Days ago, when I recorded the last podcast, and you know, you might think, what's going on? I mean, it's just been two days. When I did the last podcast, gold was soaring, the dollar was tanking, uh, the markets were going up. Why? Why were the markets so excited a couple of days ago? Well, we got horrible economic data. I mean, the economic data that we got. Shift show. Gold stocks were down big. In fact, I think gold stocks were down about 5%, 5 percent, five and a half percent on the day, almost six percent. And that's on basically a six, six tenths of a percent decline in the price of gold. I mean, gold was only down about 10 bucks, uh, but gold stocks were down much more. Now, silver dropped about 50 cents. Remember, all the way back down to 19, it was over 20 bucks a couple of days. In fact, when it comes to the Dow Jones averages, the utilities were the weakest. They were down almost 4 percent, 3.7 percent. The Nasdaq was down two and a half percent. The composite down 133 points. But various sectors were hit very hard, uh, particularly the interest rate sensitive sectors. I mentioned the utilities, but the home builders got crushed. Emerging markets got obliterated. Gold